All right, we are getting ready for this is the uh, this is the pregame show, just like we always do every other Friday. We're going to warm up Facebook and warm up YouTube. Uh, if you are watching this on a recorded version, in other words, if it is not uh, December twentieth at nine a.m. Hawaii time, you are watching the on-demand version. You may want to scroll ahead about four minutes or so, uh, or else you can kind of sit back and and watch us kind of warm up the video stream. And I've got uh, I've got some. We got some great. We got a great great show for you today. Something really really special. Uh, I got my friend Dylan. Nonaka, who's with us, Dylan? How's it going, buddy? It's going great. And so now, excited about this show. Oh, me, I can't. Guests. I can't. I can't wait. Uh, we and we have our special guest. I'm, I'm, yeah, we got our special guest down below. Uh, we have uh, Uncle Buddy and Auntie Casey, who are on location on the Big Island, really near the volcano. So we're going to be sharing with that. And Dylan's got a map he's going to share with you later. But as part of our warm up over here, uh, Uncle Buddy and Auntie Casey, what we do is we we talk about our Aloha shirts. At least part of us do. Uh, so Dylan, uh, what do you? Uh, clearly, you're celebrating the lava flow. What are you wearing there, Dylan? Yeah, this is this is a this is a red spooner, and I thought for the the Christmas season and the lava flow, I'd go with red today. So it's a classic red spooner with uh, all kinds of different designs on it. But yeah, in honor of Madame Pelle, who went with red today. In honor of Madame Pelle, uh, and uh, appropriately so. You know, now uh, Uncle Buddy, I see that that green shirt. I was actually I was going to tell you, you no, know, I I've got a I've got an Aloha shirt that's same kind of green. What what kind of, do you know? What kind of a shirt that I you know I'm going to throw this on you right now, Uncle. But what do you what's what's the Aloha shirt that that you're wearing there? You know, this is uh, this is also a, a Ren Spooner, which is uh, but is the only real Aloha shirts that I've ever, not ever worn, but uh, probably I've worn for the last 40 years. So I uh, I now have an abundance since I don't work anymore and don't have to, you know, and barely get dressed in the morning. So uh, <laughs> I never wear an Aloha shirt unless there is an occasion like this. So now I have about, you know, or had about 200 of these things sitting in the closet, just molding away. But uh yeah, this is a Rans, just like uh, the one that Dylan's wearing. Yeah, they're good shirts. They're good, great, great uh, little shirts. Classic, uh, classic Rens booter. Now, um, Auntie Casey, we have to to reveal something very special about about your role here in this show because you want what's uh, why don't you share everybody what your relation is to Dylan? What's your relation to to Dylan, Auntie? Oh, well, my relation is that he's my number one son and I'm extremely proud of him and, and uh, just love following everything he does. So <laughs> there you go, man. Hey, everybody. Enjoy. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And, and we have a couple of people who are already commenting on this. So uh, Align FX, aloha to you. And uh, Milo, yeah, mahalo for doing the show. <clears throat> We're really happy that you're here. We're totally stoked. I mean, it's it's it kind of came as a sort of a, a a quick, you know, top, top of my head, like, you know, we ought to do this. And so Auntie Casey, so everybody who's watching now, you're getting an inside scoop. This is Dylan's mom. Auntie Casey is Dylan's mom. And we're like totally <laughs> stoked uh, that she is, is here. And uh, uh, Uncle Buddy, we're totally stoked that you folks are here. And I'm absolutely happy that everyone else is here with us. And hey, gang, so if you have any questions or comments, uh, as you all know, we got about a minute to go before we start the actual show. Uh, throw those comments in on the comment stream. And of course, I'll be doing my best to, to kind of field all those comments and uh, get yourselves on the way there. And uh, so, you know, what's the, uh, well, let's give us a little bit of, of, of a taste here, uh, Uncle Buddy and Auntie Casey. What's the, what's the background? Where are you folks sitting over there right now? Oh, uh, we're, we're out on a, uh, an enclosed lanai area uh, of our house, uh, looking out at, uh, looking down towards the street in our little little uh, subdivision here, and right in front of us, we can barely see the street. It's just all tree ferns and ohia trees, and yeah, yeah, just just a really nice spot. We call it our sunroom, and it's full of orchids and plants, and you know, wonderful things that grow really well up here. So. Yeah, that's that's totally awesome. I mean, it's kind of neat because I is that a is that a reflection that's behind you or is that that's right window? here? Right in back of us is actually a glass. Uh, uh, is is uh, the glass separating us between the living room? I love it. So we're basically able to kind of see what you're looking at, which is totally cool. That's right. So that, yes. that's a really cool that's effect. Right. And, uh, and, and Mark, yeah, uh, Milo, Ohio, this is Mark from your move to white. Mark is one of the lucky few that has joined the Islander Ohana. And so Mark, I'm totally stoked that you're here. 
um, we're going to be starting uh, the on, on January 15th. I'm going to put a link in the description. On January 15th, we're going to be starting a, we have a, a, a special cohort that's going to be going through uh, an incredible program called the Hawaii Islander Transformation Program. I'm totally stoked about it. So, Mark, I'm really glad that you're here. And Ray, I mentioned to uh, I, I mentioned earlier um, before the the show started, uh, Uncle Buddy said, "Who else watches this thing?" And I said, "You know what? We have a guy that comes in from Afghanistan. There's Ray. There's Ray from Afghanistan." So, Hello, Buddy, Ray. Yeah, isn't that cool? It's such the it it's, is. The, it's the so coolest amazing. thing, right? It is really. I, I mean, it's it's yeah. amazing. It, it's an amazing world that that we uh, with that that we live in. And Raul is here with us. Good morning, Raul. Good uh, and aloha kakahiaka to you, Raul. And hey, folks, it is that time. So let's get the let's get the actual program started over here. Um, I'm super glad that, that that you're all here. We just put this together on the fly. I talked to Dylan and said, Dylan, we should do this. He goes, yeah, okay, let's go. And and goes, I've got the perfect folks for you. So here's what we got planned for you today, folks, uh, on today's uh, special edition show. Uh, we got our we got our amazing guest, uh, Uncle Buddy and Auntie Casey. Auntie Casey, who's Dylan's mom, which is totally cool. We're going to start with some facts. I put together a short video for you that I pulled from the US Geological Survey. Uh, I'm going to show you that quick video. And then we're going to get in some facts. Dylan's got some cool maps he's, he's going to show us. And then we're going to get into the meat of the show, which is what's life like near an active volcano. And really, we're really here for you folks to take your Q&A. I can't wait to see what your questions are going to be. Um, it's going to be it's going to be amazing. We've got a couple of people who are already here. So uh, so. Uh, Tommy's Aloha from Ohio and and Megan uh, uh, Megan is also joined in the group and so Megan and Mark uh, we got a bunch of people that are part of that Islander Ohana so it's totally cool uh, that we're gonna be <laughs> we're gonna be getting into that all right so let me do this I'm gonna start with a little pre-roll video uh, to uh, that I put together to roll out the um, uh, put together the facts in a way where let me get to this over here where is it Come on, uh, there we go. Okay, here we go. Shortly after approximately 9.30 p.m. Hawaii Standard Time on December 20th, 2020, the U.S. Geological Survey Hawaiian Volcano Observatory detected a glow within Hale Ma'u Ma'u Crater at the summit of Kilauea Volcano. An eruption has commenced within Kilauea's summit caldera. Lava began flowing from the three fissure vents inside the crater of Kilauea. The water lake at the base of the Hale Ma'u Ma'u crater has boiled off. Lava is now feeding a growing lava lake. The northern fissure, what you're seeing now, was producing the tallest lava fountain at roughly 165 feet, and all lava was contained within Hale Ma'u Ma'u crater in Kilauea. Red spots are the fissure vents feeding lava flowing into the bottom of Hale Ma'u Ma'u Crater. The water lake at the base of Hale Ma'u Ma'u Crater has been replaced with a growing lava lake. The easternmost vent is currently exhibiting fountains up to approximately 164 feet high with minor fountaineering on the west side. Occasional blasts of uncertain origin are occurring from the lava lake surface. All right. Well, there was a there was a quick overview. I had a lot of fun doing that. You know, I could actually stare at that. Yeah. Uh, I could right? I could, mm -hmm. I, right. I could just that 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 lava flow. That first one was just like mesmerizing. I thought about. I think what I might do is put that like on a loop, and put that for like for like an hour, like a one hour video of that thing kind of going on a loop and just kind of have some music in the background. What do you all think about that? If I did that, would you watch it? I couldn't take my eyes off of it. Uh, anyway, so let's move on. We, we got some more facts. So Dylan, you put together a slide over here. So let me bring that guy, let me bring that slide up for you over here and uh, give us uh, give us the, the uh, amazing story here, Dylan. Yeah, I just wanted to put into context and, and welcome my mom and bud to the to the show and and I just wanted to uh, intro them also that if you know you enjoy the show and you think that I, the stuff I say is smart I learned it from both of them they've been in real estate uh, buddy's been in real estate longer than I've been alive and my mom uh, got me into I wouldn't have been in the business if she didn't force me to go to real estate school with her and, and I'm a good boy so I listen to my mom so um yeah so that's how I got here is definitely because of them and they've they've now kind of retired so I'm glad they're cruising up in volcano but 
the super cool thing is that, you know, if you're interested about what's going on right now, they live in Volcano Village, which is literally, if you draw a straight line, it's like four miles away from the, where the volcano is actually erupting right now. So it's right across from Volcanoes National Park. And there's a big community there. It's not just, a, you know, a few people. There's uh, pretty large subdivisions you can kind of see on both sides of the road there. I don't know exactly what the population is, but there's definitely a few thousand people that, that live up there. Uh, the good news is, is they're somewhat upslope. So there is no real danger and that's an important fact when it comes to volcanoes is you can be close to them but you just don't want to be down slope of them so um right. that's a big important fact is that they although ge ge you know geographically are close there there really is no threat from the from the lava where they live excellent so uh thanks everyone so this is uh we've we've kind of put forth and actually you know i want to bring that map up again now you drew a line from the center of uh, Hale Ma'u Ma'u Crater, right? That is the epicenter of the crater, but which is a four mile stretch to uh, Uncle Buddy and Auntie Casey's home. But if you actually look at the little blue dot there of uh, the Kilauea Visitor Center, the Kilauea Visitor Center, you, you can see that road that goes into that visitor center. If you look at that, from that to their home is gotta be not even a mile maybe. You guys are, yeah, you guys are right there, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, it's like a mile. It, it's maybe a mile, mile and a half, but that uh, that's it, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'd like to add something to what uh, Dylan was saying. You know, it, it's good to be downhill of, uh, you know, uh, in, on, the, on the downhill side of a rift zone that uh, goes all the way from Kilauea all the way out to the very eastern part of the island. So, uh, it, and that's how they, that's how they determine, uh, uh, lava zones and and hazard uh, the hazard zone is how close you are to that that rift zone out there you know so uh, it's good to be on the upside of that that however does not uh, mean that you're not subject to uh, earthquakes so uh, <laughs> earthquakes are still uh, don't have any uh, uh, they're they're not really conscious of uh, whether you're up or down. They don't care. So uh, you can get some very interesting times like we did during that last eruption. Uh, not the current one, but the one before that was so devastating out in uh, the Pune district. But the, the earthquakes are really a, a factor of life up here. Mm -hmm. That's you know you know this is this is great. <coughs> uh, thanks, Uncle Buddy, for that 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 comment. Because what I want to kind of get into now is kind of you know what's life like uh, near being you know you folks are you know again four miles away from the epicenter of the volcano, a mile away really from the from the ridge of it. Now you just mentioned earthquakes. So so what are the? I mean, we were there was an earthquake once that we were on on Oahu, and it was really it was terrifying. Uh, you know, you you know this thing. But what's what's it like? I mean, what's what are the things that kind of stand out when you think about if someone were to ask you, hey, you know, I'm thinking about moving, uh, you know, to Hawaii, uh, the Big Island, and I'm kind of worried about the volcano. Uh, what's it like living? You folks are really a mile away, basically, from the world's most active volcano. What's that like? Well, you know, Peter, it's really interesting because I moved here from upstate New York uh, over 40 years ago. And one of my concerns um, when I thought about moving over here was the volcano. And, you know, I'd actually looked at a couple of properties and thought, well, you know, that might be a little too close to the volcano. And and I laugh about that now because now I live a mile from the volcano, you know, so it, 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 it's nothing that, that I ever worry about. And um, we live in this very peaceful little town. I mean, you, you would never know that we're, you know, so close to such an active force. Uh, and very rarely does it affect us. You know, like Buddy said, we don't have the bog up here um, when it gets bad, you know, that Kailua Kona has. <clears throat> and you really uh, don't even know you're that close to a volcano. But, but on the positive side, we have this uh, national park where we can go walk miles and miles of beautiful trails that's right in our backyard. You know, so there's there's really good things about living up here. And, and you know, we we uh, you know, we were involved in the hustle and bustle of Kailua Kona for years. And it's just really nice to be up here where it's very peaceful. <laughs> Now I got to tell you that's a, that's a hilarious comment. Uh, when you say hustle and bustle of Kailua Kona, <laughs> that is like cracking me up because Dylan, what's the population of Kailua Kona? What's it, what's it got to be now? 
Uh, it's it's like 60, 70,000. Okay, yeah, the hustle and bustle of a 60, 70,000 of, you know, it's such a small town. And, you know, when we talk about hustle and bustle, I'm thinking Honolulu, which is a million people. <laughs> uh, you know, that's right, like, yeah. hustle, right? Everything is relative, right? And, you know, I was born in Chicago and, you know, there's some, you know, a, a, the, the, the Chicago metro area has 8 million people. Um, by the way, um, Andy Casey, I, I kind of, I'm catching like a, some sort of a Midwest, is that a Midwestern accent there? It, it's upstate New York. So yeah, we were close to Canada so that we do have, yep, some okay. of that. Mm -hmm. okay, okay. So it's a little bit of a, a little bit of a, of a Canadian accent. So, so let me ask you, so one thing I kind of catch, uh, one, one question I got for you is that, you know, uh, Uncle Buddy, you 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 touched on it about being sort of on the slope, but you know the 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 town of Volcano. And let me br bring up the map again because that was actually really really helpful. So, um, it I'm looking at, at the map and it, it's it's what's the elevation like? Because that area where you're in looks very green and very very lush. It doesn't look like it's like 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 the the other side, which is you know kind of uh, overridden with uh, with lava flow. So it looks like what you folks are like up uphill from the from the flow. I mean, how yes. does that work? Yeah, if you can. If you can see the main highway there, uh, I'll resist yep, I see it. Trying, to, yep. trying to show you it with my, yep. my finger here. But if you see where our we live in Volcano Village, across the highway there is Mauna Loa Estates and a couple of other subdivisions there. And then below that, uh, there is a there is a line there that probably delineates uh, the the national park, but. Uh, that's where the rift zone is and it's below that that subdivision there for uh, actually quite a bit but uh, uh so the proximity looks like whoa you know but it's it's really i think we're in lava zone three which is right. a good lava one zone to safest. be in yeah, yeah well it's not one of the safest but it's <laughs> definitely uh, you know, you can still get you can still get you can still get insurance anyway. Uh, living in Lava Zone Three, which is a whole nother topic. But uh, so if so, you look so at the highway below the highway, and and actually quite a bit below the highway is where the rift zone is. So uh, we're yeah we're uphill. You're up, you're uphill, and uh, yeah, we're, we're at thirty seven. Our our location uh, our right where this house is is about thirty six hundred feet. Got it. So yeah, you're 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 literally uphill, and you know we all know that lava doesn't go uphill, right? At least that's, no, that's, at least that's, that's right. Yeah. At least we don't. We at least we don't think it does. Uh, at least we we haven't seen it do that yet. And then, uh, um, so so gang, I want to uh, remind everybody that uh, uh, this is this is a priceless opportunity. We've got some folks. Uh, by the way, how how long have you folks? Let me uh, wrong wrong shot here. How. How long have you folks been living uh, in Volcano? We, we've had a house here since 2000. Uh, we just actually uh, moved up here permanently. We would come up every weekend. So, uh, And I've been coming up here periodically almost all my life, really, because I was born and raised in Honolulu. But, uh, so we what we going in two years, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this, permanent. This, yeah. this September, <laughs> permanently. But. Awesome, but lifelong. I mean, you big folks. I mean, you've been you lifelong. You were uh, born in, in born and raised in Honolulu, and uh, Auntie Casey, uh, you've been, of course, on the Big Island for you know a, a quite a while. Uh, so, so gang, what I wanted to 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 give y'all this is a this is a priceless opportunity right now. You've got uh, some folks that have been living that live you know about as close as the volcano as you can possibly live without living on it. Uh, and you couldn't live on it legally. Uh, you've got about as close to the volcano, an active volcano on the Big Island as you are ever going to get. And right now, um, we're going to go for until we get the questions done. And then when the questions are done, we're going to end the show because there's nothing else to, to talk about unless we want to kind of add a few more things in here. So this is your chance. Put in your questions. Uh, give us your questions right now. What do you want to know from folks that are living, you know, really within a mile of the world's most active volcano. It's really an amazing, and and you know, I, I wanna take this moment to to thank you to uh, Uncle Buddy, Auntie Casey for being here. I so appreciate you taking the the time to, to spend with us. Dylan, this is like an excellent connection. It couldn't be, it could does not get any better at all uh, on this. Uh, let me kind of go through some of that. A lot of, lot of questions, a lot of, uh, lot of comments going on in the show here. So let me kind of go through these real, real quick and see what we got. Um, uh, Megan had it. Oh yeah, we have uh, Kathy. Here we go. So here's one from uh, from Kelly Collins. 
And Kelly says, uh, mahalo for doing the show. You are welcome. You really want to thank uh, Uncle Buddy and Auntie Casey and Dylan because uh, I couldn't do it. I mean, I could talk about it, but all I, all I could do is that intro video. Uh, they say, we live in Kailua Kona. And we are not directly affected by the volcano. We are wondering what the VOG situation is. What's going on with the VOG? And actually, Dylan, to your point, what's gonna is, is there a concern about VOG going on to Kailua Kona? So first, uh, uh, Uncle Buddy and Auntie Casey, what's the VOG like out there? What do you think is going to happen? And then Dylan, follow up with what the, what the VOG is going to be like in Kailua Kona. Uh, you know that there's a... Uh, um, what, what is it? An atmospheric geologic uh, fa uh, factors going on here that affect, uh, you know, all this stuff, this gas, uh, steam, uh, and most of it is water vapor, what they, what they call uh, what, you know, that constitutes what VOG is. But uh, anyway, it, it gets thrown up and it's only happening when there's an eruption, you know, when, when that last eruption stopped, VOG stopped immediately. But uh, right now, this whatever is being thrown out of uh, Kilauea will go straight up. And the prevailing trade winds blow that stuff to the west. And we are east of that. So it blows it away from us. It blows it to the west towards the lee of the island. And it gets trapped over there. And that's why sometimes, you know, like in the last, when we had that ongoing eruption for 30 something years, the VOG in heat in the Kona side would be, would get pretty intolerable. But over here, generally speaking, unless there are not trade winds and the winds coming from the south, which is not that often, uh, you wouldn't, you wouldn't notice any VOG up here. And today is a great case. It's just absolutely pristine, clear. You know that volcano that I talk about. The like the perfect location if you're going to live if you're going to live near the volcano on the east side of the Big Island. I got a, a volcano is just like just perfect. Just like it's, it's up it's it's up high in elevation. You mentioned you folks mentioned earlier, uh, Auntie Casey. You mentioned about the weather. Uh, what's what's the weather like uh, in uh, near that in that area in that region? Well, right now we're kind of, I guess, what you would call in the rainy season. And we experienced this last year where we had, um, you know, probably two or three months of, of solid rain. Um, but like I mentioned before, you know, the temperature up here is what really attracts me to, to this, you know, sleepy little town. It's never much hotter than 75 degrees. In the summer months, it's just beautiful here. I mean, it's 75, barely 80, and the sun shines all the time. Um, I'm a farmer, and I love to grow my own uh, vegetables. And, um, you know, the summer months here were just spectacular. I had the most beautiful garden, uh, you know, in the front yard over here. Um, right now, because of the rain, you know, the vegetables don't do that great outside. You know, you really need a greenhouse. But, uh, you know... The, the the weather is just spectacular. I mean, when it rains, you really need to be able to, you know, get your, you know, comfy sweater on and sit down with a book because, you know, it, it might last the whole day. But, you know, that's good, too, for us retired people. So, <laughs> you know, the the, uh, the 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 average rainfall up here, Hilo has an average. I think I, I'm not sure this is true today, but uh, the, historically they've had an average rainfall. Uh, annual rainfall of about 150 inches a year. And we probably get that maybe uh, actually some places down uh, down the road a little bit might even be more than that. So it's wet. There's no doubt about yeah. it. You know, it, it, it can be, it can be, if not raining, it's, it can be foggy or, you know, mm -hmm. misty, you know, yeah. which, which is really nice. And by the way, I just want to interject a little bit. We're looking out here at, at all these tree ferns that you can see in the background here and watching native birds, you know, just flittering around on our uh, hapu, which is the tree fern out here. It's, it's just spectacular. 
Yeah, that that is that's thank you. That's a great story. I could totally visualize all that, and uh, it it really it, it really sounds sounds great. Uh, Dylan, what's what's gonna what what's your concerns about the VOG uh, returning to Kona, uh, the Kona side? I remember a while ago we were saying since the volcano was not erupting, Kona was clear. Uh, what's what's kind of your your sense of what might be be happening over the next few days? Well, my wife and I were just talking about it yesterday because she. She loves to sit out on the lanai and watch the sunset every night. And she said last night was the first night that she could tell the vlog was back. So it's not that bad, but it definitely creates a, a haze in the air. And it's I guess it's a matter of perspective. It actually does create uh, pretty pretty sunsets because the sky gets really red because of it. Um, but you don't have that really clear, you know, when you look off into the distance, um, I'm, like I've talked about before, you know, driving into town from my house, it's like a, it's like a 12, 10, 12 mile drive. And in the past you would be driving and you couldn't really see the town real well and definitely not down the coastline. And when the fog was gone, I mean, it was crystal clear. You could see the details of the town and the waves, the waves breaking and stuff, um, you know, 10 miles away. So definitely if the volcano continues, you know, the fog will return. That's just a fact of life. Um, whether or not it's, I mean, a concern is a different, you know, there are people that have had health effects because of it. And they say, if you have asthma and stuff, it can, it can affect your breathing and stuff. You know, I've lived here my whole life. I know plenty of people who have, and I've never really experienced any type of health effects. It's more of just a visual nuisance because you don't have those beautiful long views that you would normally have when the air is clear. You're, you're muted, Peter. Thank you, Dylan. Uh, you know, I think the the health effects will vary. I uh, uh, my daughter, when she was little, uh, was very asthmatic, and uh, we were actually uh, we were actually in the, we were staying at one of the resorts uh, for a weekend a family getaway, and uh, my daughter had a, a really bad asthma attack. And it, I mean, I can't say it was due to the VOG or not because she had asthma attacks here on Oahu as well. Uh, but she had an asthma attack, and we had to jump on the airplane and do an emergency flight to get back to uh, to Oahu. So uh, if you do have if you uh, if you are uh, at, if you do have respiratory issues, you want to look into that further. Uh, but it, it is going to vary. So so Kelly, uh, you are living in Kailua Kona, so you should be knowing. You should also know what the Vox situation is. I'm, I'm curious if you've noticed, uh, as Dylan said, uh, you get both the haze and you get the nicer uh, sunset. Uh, let me go through a few more of the comments over here. So Auditron, welcome. Uh, gr glad you're, you're here. And Laura Smith from Grass Valley, California, and Jim Daver from, from San Diego. Uh, a bunch of folks over here. Let me kind of go through if I could kind of quickly kind of get through. Uh, you guys, there's like conversations between people kind of going on, which is great. Uh, Brandy, uh, Aloha uh, Chat, and Brandy from uh, California. Uh, let's see here. We got all, there's all kinds of fun going on. Oh, here we go. Here's a... Uh, uh, let's talk a little about a real estate thing. So this is okay. So folks, not only do we have like the, the super treat here that we have Dylan, uh, who's a, a real estate agent, but we have uh, Auntie Casey, who is the real estate agent that taught Dylan how to be a real estate agent. So we got some veterans over here, and we have Uncle Buddy, who was born uh, in Honolulu. Uncle Buddy, when did you? How long ago did you move to the Big Island? Uh, 1969. There you go. So been in the <laughs> since 1969. Um, and so we got some great experts over here. So uh, uh, Mark uh, Milo, Ohio says, do you expect a rise in demand for homes away from the volcano or in safer lava zones? Dylan, why don't you kind of hit that? And then Auntie Casey, you can follow up with, uh, with, with what Dylan says. You know, my advice always on lava zones is that as long as you're not in lava zone one, the likelihood of you getting any type of effect from lava is very, very low. And so although people try and avoid lava zone two also, and um, you know, want to be in lava zone three or higher, or some people even have it in their mind that they want to be in like lava zone six or higher. Uh, the, there isn't a huge threat if you're in lava zone two and you don't have any issues with insurance or anything like that. You can definitely get lending, you can get insurance. So whether there's going to be a rise in demand, I mean, it's kind of hard to say because it's more about where you want to live. I mean, there's, there's, 30% of the island is in, is in lava zone two or, you know, more than that. So that's where most of the lower cost housing is. And so if your budget only allows for, you know, you to spend up to maybe 400,000, you're not going to have really any options in lava zone four or higher because those areas just, um, and it's not based on the lava zone necessarily. It's more based on the weather and the economics of the, of the area that drive those prices. So I don't know if there's going to be a big change. I can just tell you anecdotally, I did have one showing in a lava zone two property 
that canceled yesterday because the buyers were uncomfortable looking in Lava Zone 2. So that was just one little example of, you know, definitely it's going to play into the mindset of some people. But for the folks that have been here, like my mom and Uncle Butter talking about, you know, if you've been here for a while, it's not something that you worry about necessarily. It's more of a, uh, you know, something that I think people that are not familiar with the volcano and what the actual effects are and the really minimal effects on life on a day to day basis are that that worry about that kind of stuff. Well, you know, what people don't understand is that the volcano has actually been actively erupting since 1984. So it's become a part of life and the market has adjusted appropriately. It's not like a shock to the system. Uh, but uh, Auntie Casey, what, what do you say when, when someone says like uh, uh, Milo here who says, uh, you know, do you expect a rise in demand? What do you kind of see? What's, what's, when someone asks you those kinds of questions, what was, what's been your typical response above and beyond what Dylan has already said? Well, I guess um, I feel like, you know, during my career, it wasn't a real big issue. I mean, we, you know, most of our business was in Kailua Kona, you know, which is a fairly place, safe place to be. But um, it wasn't, you know, it, it doesn't become an issue until, like Dylan said, you know, you're looking at insurance um, uh, or, you know, I think also what Dylan said, you know, most of the people choose where they want to live in Hawaii due to, you know, either the price factor where, you know, there's subdivisions where you can still get a three acre piece of property here for, you know, $18,000 uh, and in a, in a fairly safe lava zone. So, you know, of course, I would highly recommend, you know, no one buys in lava zone one or builds in lava zone one because we've seen what happens and, you know, We've seen people who have had their homes destroyed and then rebuild and have their homes destroyed again. So it's 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 going to happen again. You know, lava is going to continue to flow. So, you know, stay in those safer lava zones and, uh, you know, you won't have a problem. Um, and really choose. I mean, retired people can be more out in the country and, and, you know, there's wonderful subdivisions that are an hour and a half from Kailua Kona that are really safe and you can, you know, get a, a nice little house for $200,000, but you've got to be able Kona? to, no, 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 an hour and a half from Kailua Kona. Mm, is what I said. Mm. Yeah. So, you know, if you can, if you don't have to drive to work every day, there's some great deals here in Hawaii. Um, as you know, if you're willing to be an hour and a half away from, um, you know, civilization, I guess <laughs> is what we'd say, you know, there's Hawaiian ocean view estates where you can get a great deal. So, you know, it, it's all a matter of really what you're looking for and, and where you want to live and, and whether or not you need to be close to a place where you can be employed, um, I think is more of what people were asking me when, you know, when I was doing uh, sales. Yeah, this is this is remote up here. You know, um, there, there are areas on the Big Island. You, you got to come to the Big Island and, and kind of feel it. We got something for everybody over mm -hmm. here. Yeah, there. You know, we we have it all, um, and you can spend. Uh, you know, you can buy an acre of land for six thousand dollars. You can buy an acre of land for six million dollars yeah. over here. So yeah, um, yeah. Well, well said. Well said. And something I, I, for everybody. You just gotta pick your weather, pick your climate. Uh, you know, it takes us a half an hour to go drive into Hilo, so where we do our main shopping. Because there's there isn't there's two little stores up here in the village. And, yeah. and frankly, as a as a you know a resident of uh, Volcano Village, we'd like to keep it like that too. I I don't I think any development up here would probably cause a revolution. But uh, <laughs> you know, we kind of we we kind of like our uh, we kind of like well you folks the, the what I, I'm assuming what attracted uh, the the characteristics of Volcano that attracted you there is is what makes it so nice, and you kind of. Don't you? That's what you bought, so to speak. And yeah, you're not going to see yeah. that change. Yeah, that's, that's totally yeah, understandable. There's, no, there's nothing going on up here, and we like that. Yeah. You know? We like you it. Know, that. <laughs> I wanted to tell you, if, uh, you know, a funny story about you know people wondering what it's like to live up here. Well, you know, I felt that earthquake at 10:30 um, and went back to sleep just knowing, you know, the earthquakes happen all the time here. We had no idea about the eruption until we got. Um, text from our kids in Vermont and, and San Francisco, they actually told us what was going on in our backyard. So, you know, it, 
<laughs> Most of the time, we don't even know, you know, if something's going on at the volcano, we don't even know about it. But the fun part is we can jump in our car at 630 in the morning and run over and take five, a look. 530 you know, in the morning. Yeah, so. it's, it's five minutes away. So, you know, that was really fun. A lot of people have to drive, you know, an hour, two hours to, to see it. We jump in our car and we're five minutes away. So, um you know, yeah. actually, Dylan had sent me some photos. I think you folks took these. Dylan, are, are, yeah. are these from? Yeah. So I, I got some. Here, let me show some everybody some photos over here, and we got some. I'm gonna have a question here. You, you talked about the, uh, you talked about the earthquakes. Uh, 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 T. Fraunhofer said, Uncle Buddy and Auntie Casey said they are more affected by earthquakes. How does it affect their daily life? Do you worry about structural damage, etc.? Well, you kind of said you almost slept through one. I, w I, w what else about the earthquakes that you? What is it about the, you know, you said earthquakes happen often. By the way, this is a beautiful, who, who took this shot? This is beautiful. I did. This is beautiful. So this this looks like what, early morning, right? A sunrise yeah. just about. Yeah. Yep. yeah. And uh, so what that so what we're looking at here, gang, is you're looking at a steam coming out of the Hale Ma'u Ma'u crater. And as you saw earlier in that video, there's lava on the bottom and it's sort of lighting up. It's just, I, you know, I, I was there once at Volcano House. My my daughters used to have a field trip there. And, and so we stayed overnight a, a few times up there. And, uh, you know, we came out in the middle of the night and saw this just amazing uh, uh, shot here. Uh, here's another one that you took, uh, Auntie KC, a little bit later in the day. Again, that that, that those plumes uh, that Uncle Buddy, you mentioned that steam that's coming out. Basically, there's water at there was water at the bottom of this lava lake that's now being burned off by the lava. Uh, it's steaming out and uh, it's, it's going out into the into the into the atmosphere. So these are just dramatic shots. I mean, kind of waking up in the morning and looking at this is like holy moly. Yeah, um, yeah. It's, and it's important. It's important to mention, right, that um, although lava is a scary thing, it's a huge destructive force. I mean, it's so safe. You can get, this is close. I mean, yeah. right, this is, this is like probably a mile away from, you know, you're looking down into the crater, but you can get relatively close to it and it's very safe. I mean, it's not like there's huge, you know, eruptions where it's spraying lava all over the place. It's just kind of bubbling up from the earth. So it's not a, it's not a real volatile situation. Yeah, it's not. It's 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 an ama it's an interesting volcano. A very good point, Dylan. It's not an explosive volcano like a uh, Mount St. Helens or you know you hear of these volcanoes of uh, whatever you know you know what I mean. Uh, the explosive volcanoes. It's not an explosive volcano. It's kind of more like an oozing volcano. There's a little yeah. bit of shower. You saw that earlier, but it kind of oozes. Um, and so, uh, when, when the volcano is erupting and when lava is flowing people, as you mentioned, anti Casey, people who have had their homes destroyed, they had plenty of time to get out of the way, yes. plenty of time, mm -hmm. even to move the house for that matter. Some people right. have, have done that in time. Um, yeah. so that's great. So is there anything more you want to add about the, about the, uh, to take uh, Fraunhofer's uh, question here about the volcanoes? What else, what, what else about the earthquakes? I'm sorry. What else about the earthquakes? What, uh, what people one important note on the earthquakes, right, is, is I mean, at, at least in my lifetime being here, there's really only been one earthquake in 2006 that did any type of real damage to mm -hmm. um, structures or, or property. And even in that sense, a lot of it was like older public buildings, concrete public buildings and stuff. I mean, really, mm -hmm. very few homeowners saw any type of real damage. And a lot of homes here are built post and pier. So they're on stilts right so when the when there's an earthquake the house kind of goes like this and then it stops and then you're fine i mean there is no like major structural damage sometimes you'll get a you know the, the drywall seams will crack or something like that but you can easily paint over that and it's not something that structurally affects your house so it's not a huge um concern day to day for us if there's there's regular earthquakes they're not like like yeah. san francisco where it like destroys the city and you know buildings right. are falling down they're not like yeah. that it, it's very interesting because it reminds you, you know, when you do have earthquakes that you're living on this island that's alive, you know, and and um, we used to laugh because driving down, you know, in Honau now where the coffee farms are, there's all these old coffee shacks and, and you think to yourself, how did that thing stand up, you know? for 150 years, you know, with, with earthquakes, it's just but flexibility, you yeah. know, living here 40 years, I've never had, I had a rock wall fall in the one Dylan was talking about 2006, but I've never had any damage to any home that I've lived in. And, you know, we had a 4.4 before this eruption, we had a, a three point something a couple of days before that, which, you know, we just kind of laugh about, but to be honest with you, the last eruption, we had, what was it, 100, over 100 earthquakes a day. Oh, yeah. Most of them were small. And we 
kind of enjoyed yeah. it because we were only coming up here for the With weekends. That. But people that lived here, I mean, I'm sure it got a little bit old, you know, at, at one earthquake after another and sometimes waking you up that, at night, that, you know, but no damage still. N and, none. And, and, yeah. and that that activity was due to a specific event. And that was right. the collapse of the Kilauea caldera where it was imploding in on itself, you know, and then it stopped. Right. And yeah. uh yeah, that was pretty. That was pretty amazing, and it was it was more interesting than fearsome. It right. was just a phenomenal yeah. geologic thing to experience. Yeah, that's yeah. really truly remarkable. Um, yeah. You know, the um, uh, we we got another question here from uh, Megan, who is a member of the Islander Ohana and Gang. I'm going to post a link to that for those of you that want to uh, sign up. We're almost full. I'm going for a cohort of 15 people. I'm taking 15 people on essentially a journey. Uh, to go through an Islander transformation, to learn what you need to learn uh, to live in Hawaii uh, financially, spiritually, culturally. Uh, and I'm totally excited. Uh, but Megan, uh, Megan says, can you touch on insurance rates based on lava zones? Now, earlier, uh, Auntie Casey, you said, you know, you want to kind of stay away from lava zone one. Um, Dylan, what's the, what's the insurance rate like, uh, roughly speaking? Do you give us any kind of rule of thumb in terms of what to expect? You know, lava zone two, you know, two, three, assuming you stay away from lava zone one. Uh, there's no significant difference. There was a little bump when the uh, volcano was raging in 2018. There was a bump and almost uh, there was a, a pause. Actually, some insurers were not insuring in Lava Zone 2. Everywhere else, you could get insurance, no problem. But that ended um, in 2019 and you can get insurance, you know, for a normal house, uh, you know, three, four hundred thousand dollar house in Lava Zone 2. You're looking at like twelve to fifteen hundred dollars a year. It's not expensive. And that's yeah. including that's that's insurance, including hurricane insurance, which is more expensive. I mean, hurricane insurance is usually 50% of your policy because uh, that's the real threat is hurricanes, not necessarily lava or earthquake or anything like that. You, you know, also you can't get lava insurance. So right. it's, it's, it's fire insurance that you, you get. There is no insurance against uh, a lava flow. Your house will burn up before the lava gets gets to it anyway so excellent excellent hey i gotta thank you thank you both thank you all i've got a, a great question here for you from uh eric who's also a member uh mm -hmm. eric we're definitely looking forward to the cohort uh with with the fellow students uh dylan here's a, it, uh, eric's clearly in the navy over here uh <laughs> but uh but most importantly let's talk about golf uh uh anti casey uncle buddy i don't know if you folks play golf or not but eric wants to know about are they going to reopen the volcano golf course love that area but need golf from my retirement years what's up with that well, I think that's a uh, Kamehameha Schools, Bishop of State question. Um, I have heard, and this is uh, vague information, that uh, the, the past lessee of that property has pretty much bailed out. And uh, I think it's now up to Kamehameha Schools, the landowner, as to what's going to happen with it. But I, I, I understand that they're at least trying to maintain you know, not just let the whole place just go back to, to nature, that they are, there is some maintenance going on up there. And hopefully, hopefully for not only the people that live on the golf course side, but on the village side and Mauna Loa States and wherever, uh, a new uh, uh, operator will come along and take that uh, that thing over and uh, and bring it back because uh, that that's a real bonus to this area up here. Yeah, thank you for those uh, for that 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 background and th those details. Really appreciate it. Uh, another quick another quick question from uh, from Eric on Inaloa area. Uh, how is Inaloa? I've noticed some new homes there, and it looks interesting. Uh, Dylan, what's what's up with with Inaloa? Inaloa is lava zone three. So lava although it's geographically three. close to to where the flows were in Leilani Estates, um, it's 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 upslope and yeah, it's a great area. And you can get a you know brand new home there for 300, 350 granite countertops, super nice. You know it is rural. You will be on catchment. Um, and then one of the downsides of that area is that there's really one uh, highway that goes in and out of Hilo. So most of the people commute in, in and out of Hilo for work, and so the traffic can be bad during rush hour. I guess that's relative, depending on where you're coming from. But everything's you, relative. You can't, everything's uh, relative. Traffic for Hawaii can be bad there. Yeah, so. Everything's relative. Everything's relative. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, and it actually, may, it our, may take you 20 minutes instead of 15. You know, so it's one of those. Excellent. Uh, actually, I want to give a quick shout out to our buddy Scott. Scott's our Scott is our regular co-host. Uh, he's got a listing he's got to go oh, to nice. this morning. Yeah, yeah. So he's not going to be with us, but he's he uh, he he chimed in too, uh, uh, Uncle Buddy. From what you said, they're going to reopen the golf course in about six months. Uh, Kamehameha Schools great. is doing the necessary improvements. So there you go. Thanks, Scott, for the inside awesome. scoop. Yeah, that's great news. Um, 
a quick uh, quick question from uh, again from Megan. How many days, weeks out of the year does VOG typically affect the view or people with respiratory issues? I'm going to quick say, look, it's hard to say because it depends on the volcano and the volcano sort yeah. of uh, it's it's not predictable. Uh, Dylan, uh, uh, Uncle Buddy, Auntie Casey, you folks are right there. What, what, there, what do you there, about there, there isn't any VOG right now, really. I mean, this and this this lava flow is going to be over. This is not going to be a sustaining event. This is a I predict this thing's already probably tapering off. So don't worry about it. There, there you go. There, there's your answer. Thank you. Uh, and here's a kickback from from uh, from Kelly. Uh, we lived here for a full time a year now, inspired partly by you. There you go. Well, that's that's great to hear. So we haven't really experienced the VOG yet. Did notice the beautiful red sunset? Yes, that's how you know. That's how you know the VOG uh, the VOG is returning. Uh, Eric uh, does says does VA limit guarantee on homes in regards to lava zones? Uh, is there Dylan? What's the scoop on, on that? Uh, no, you can you can get a VA loan in Lava Zone Two and up. You can't in Lava Zone One, um, but no no issues with getting a VA loan. We do them all the time. All right, well there there you go. Uh, Joey's got a quick question. Uh, he said, "If uh, Aloha, if a deep lava flow covers the vast majority of one's property, do you still fully own the land underneath, or does it become restricted by local laws in any way?" Good question. Uh, who wants to try to take it that? Who wants to kind of hit that one? Uh, go ahead, Uncle Buddy. Fill us in. What's the what's the deal with that? Well, my my I, my understanding is is that you you still own the the lot the the land underneath and now the the land up above. So you you be the proud owner of you could be the proud owner of a a lot that has you know fifty feet of new lava uh, on it if you live in Leilani Estates or someplace like that. Uh, it's interesting if you had a beachfront property uh, and you own the uh, uh, the um, when if the lava came down and uh, filled in your your beach property and then uh, extended the shoreline 50 feet out, you don't own that. The state owns that. All the new aggregated land is uh, owned by the state if it's on the ocean. So. But yeah, so you'd be the proud owner of a lot of ah uh -uh. and uh -uh, and what is ah uh ah -uh? uh -uh is one of the uh, two types of uh, uh, lava that are uh, that, that come out of a volcano, uh, Fahoy Hoy and uh, uh uh, and those Hawaiian names, by the way, are adopted uh, or applied worldwide. Oh, that's interesting. So, I, I, if I'm not mistaken, the uh, uh lava flow is the crumbly, rocky kind of kind of lava flow, and the uh, pahoe hoe uh, lava flow is the ropey, looks like ropey, sort of smooth kind of right. lava flow. Do I have that right? Yeah, yeah, yes. very good. Yeah, excellent. Uh, I had a great experience going through a lava flow about a couple of years ago. And again, on one of my daughter's field trips, uh, actually more than, oh, geez, longer ago than I actually thought. Uh, okay. So there you go. You're going to have 50 feet of, of lava flow, but it's still your your property. One important note on that is the county actually has a has a program after the last lava flow where you can apply to get your property taxes exempted if your property is now covered with lava. <laughs> so that's a nice, uh, I guess, relief on cost if you end up getting your property covered with lava. Is you can yeah, get yeah. exempted from your property taxes. Your 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 property will be well, your, your property will be essentially useless, but at least you won't have to pay taxes on it. Uh, <laughs> That's that's a winner. Uh, a quick comment from uh, Hakeem, uh, who says uh, in, from from Pittsburgh, uh, visit Kailua Kona. Can't wait to come back. Uh, definitely. Let's see here. Uh, er, uh, Earl says uh, hi from Chicago. Hey, Earl, uh, born in Chicago, uh, northwest side uh, near the airport. Uh, hi from Chicago. What impact does VOG have on solar collection systems? What about satellite and point to point wireless? Thank you for the videos. Very valuable. I haven't heard of any disruption of that. Uh, Dylan, if, if, if you what does VOG affect that in any way? Well, I, I can tell you that since we haven't had VOG, it's definitely hotter. Um, you know, you, when you have that that haze, I, I think it did cut down on the UV rays and um, it did change the weather a little bit. Since we haven't had VOG since 2018, it's definitely temperatures have definitely been hotter um, here in here in Kona anyway. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure. I mean, I'd have to maybe ask a solar company about about if they have some aggregate data on if solar collection has increased since then, because we don't, you know, really pre-2018, we always had VOG. I mean, since there was solar technology, there's been VOG. And so we only have had a small window where there hasn't been. And 
I'm not sure if that has dramatically changed it, but definitely not for communications or any, anything like that. Right. So satellite, all that kind of stuff works fine. There's there's probably got to be some impact, some mm -hmm. impact on VOG. Uh, I mean, if there's less sun, there's less sun, and so there's less energy, but I, I don't think it's it's a significant piece. Um, yeah, great. Uh, 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 Milo, as in Florida, we have weather radios to keep track of hurricane. Is there anything similar on the Big Aunt to keep track of earthquake and volcano? Look, my quick answer, mm -hmm. Uncle Buddy, you correct me if I'm right, is, is the seat of your pants. You hear that you feel the volcano boom there's the volcano we don't need to radio that what's what's your sense of that how do people track the volcanoes and the earthquake activity well this is uh one of the i'm i'm, I'm imagining that one of the more uh, important places for uh, the u.s geological survey over here so they have a uh, and until they did the the last uh big uh, activity at Kilauea, they're, they're, they were headquartered right on the rim of the caldera. Uh, but, but so you got USGS is on this all the time. This is one of their big learning centers because Kilauea is an on, you know, considered to be a very active volcano on the planet. Uh, they're heavily, uh, invested over here and doing research. So they monitor this thing you know, like a, like a COVID patient in a, in a ward, man. It's, uh, that's a good, that's a good analogy there. I, yeah, I mean, I got, I got those, Im I had those, uh, those, that video that I, I opened up with, I got that from, yeah. uh, from the USGS, which is great. In fact, I got another photo. I pulled, uh, this, this, this is your photo, uh, Auntie Casey, but uh, this is the photo from the inside. You're looking. This is from a USGS photo uh, inside uh, the uh, uh, Hale Ma'u Ma'u crater. Just, uh, just really, just a couple days ago. Um, and and here's here's one of those great shots at night of the of uh, the, the volcano just lighting up those uh, those um, uh, uh, that that steam. So it's really dramatic stuff. Um, really amazing. Yeah, I, I would Going like to on. add the one the one other thing that they do monitor um and they did in 2006 when the second vent opened and we had uh a big increase in the amount of vog was that in some of the the schools and public buildings the, closer to uh the south part of the island they were monitoring so2 which is sulfur dioxide and i guess that can become somewhat harmful if there's, if there's too many so if there was a certain level they would um either shut the schools down or they would keep the kids indoors and not let them go play outdoors so they would shut all the windows and keep the kids indoors so that is something that they that they did monitor. I mean, they actually obviously haven't because we haven't had any activity in the last few years. But they may they may start doing that again. Is monitoring SO two? Interesting. All right, hey folks, we got like one or two questions left, so this is going to be your last call. Uh, if we don't, if we once we run out of question, I'm going to go and do a quick round and see if anybody else wants to have anything to add. But our show is going to come to a to a close. I am going to post a link right now. I'm just posted a link to everyone to the islanderohana.com. This is the community that uh, you heard me mention earlier, the cohort. Uh, Megan is part of it. Eric is, is a part of it. Mark is a part of it. we got a bunch of people that are going to be joining me starting on January 15th. We're going to go through a structured process. Uh, I put together a complete program to get you acclimated to Hawaii to pass on what I know about uh, culture in terms of what it takes for someone that moves to Hawaii, what the things that they have to learn, uh, connect with Dylan and with Scott and with other experts like our Ohana over here. Take a look. There's a link a look through the website. I've given like tons of details of what this thing is all about. And if you're interested, there's a form on that join link. Just put your email in that form and I'll follow, I'll follow up with you. Uh, you want to go check that out. And uh, let's see. The, uh, uh, well, I think one of the last questions I've got over here, so from Norman, thank you, Norman, uh, is HPP, a Hawaii Paradise Park, is it fairly safe from lava? I see some nodding heads over there. Why don't we have the yeah. experienced couple share with us? What's up with HPP? Uh, I think I think that's correct. It is fairly safe. Um, I don't, you know, it's, it's, it's definitely safe. Yeah, it's definitely safe from, uh, uh, from Kilauea, you know, I'm don't going? don't forget that there's another big active volcano on this uh, island, and that's Mauna Loa. So, don't don't forget that thing. That's another big monster. So, Dylan, what's uh, uh when when people ask you about Hawaii Paradise Park, what's your response? It's it's Lava Zone Three. Yeah. Oh, Lava yeah. Zone Three. Okay. So you're so you're kind of you're totally good. You know, you uh, know what we should do, Peter, is I I do have a map that maybe we could post or something of of the lava zones. One of the things publicly that's hard for people to evaluate is 
although there is a you know public maps you can find online of what the lava zones are, it's hard to find if you're looking at a specific property what zone it's in because you got to really zoom in on it. And sometimes it could be on the edge of two different zones. And uh, we can do that in the MLS. There's a mapping system that we can use. But so if you want to know for sure, you kind of have to reach out to somebody who has access to that. But you can generally get an idea for the island and what the lava zones are from the maps that you can find online. And I can send Peter one to, to post. Yeah, look, I want to I want to uh, emphasize uh, in the description links on the YouTube on the YouTube channel in this video, uh, there are links. Uh, if you need some help to finding a home in Hawaii, you're going to I'll connect you in with Dylan or with Scott or with Heidi, who's here, who represents Maui. Uh, we've got a, a statewide team. So make sure you let us know. You definitely you can see kind of the, the ins and outs over here, why it's beautiful to kind of connect in with Dylan, especially on the Big Island Dylan and his Ohana, because really you, you kind of get like a sort of I'm going to say three for the price of one because you get Dylan as your front man. But he's got uh, Uncle Buddy and Auntie Casey behind him who have a, a lifetime of experience and you can't buy that. You, you just can't buy that. There's, there's no price you can put in that. Joyce agrees. Joyce says, look, uh, in 2018, and I know Joyce has, Joyce is a customer of yours, right, Dylan? If I'm not mistaken, she bought a house through. She, she's, she's, uh, she was a client. Now she's my auntie. There you go. So it's auntie Joyce. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, Anthony Joyce says in 2018, VOG didn't really affect me and I have quote issues. It's all about wind direction. Yeah, that's basically it. So Joyce, that's great to hear from, get from your perspective. Really appreciate that. Um, look, we're going to, let's kind of wrap it up over here. So I'm going to give a uh, uh, buddy and Casey, anything, anything that you want to share with, uh, with everybody we've, we've had a, we have a great turnout and about 50 people have been with us up until like right now. Uh, is there anything you want to share with these folks about life near a volcano life on the big island, life in volcano? What's it like that you want to share that we haven't spoken about yet? Well, one, one of the things that, that interests me is I moved, um, here from upstate New York to get involved in the coffee industry. And so I was very involved in the coffee industry, which was really, um, led by um, early uh, Japanese immigrants. And, you know, one of the things that you really notice here when you live on the island is the lifespan of these uh, residents here in Hawaii, and especially a lot of these early coffee farmers. I mean, they lived to be 100 years old, and this, this volcano has been going off forever, you know, and we've had bog on and off since the beginning of time here on this island. So, um, that always made me feel pretty confident that it was a very safe place to live. You know, um, whether there's VOG or not, you know, it, 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 people tend to live a really long time here on the island. So it doesn't seem to affect, uh, you know, your health as far as, you know, anything that I've ever seen. So that that's one of the things that's given me comfort, you know, being here and knowing that the VOG has been here forever and, um, you know, hasn't really affected you, the residents. Yeah. I, I would totally agree. You, you, especially up here, you could come up here and, and go for a walk uh, just around the village or anywhere up in the volcano area, go into the national park. And if you don't feel like you're breathing really good, healthy, beautiful, pure air, you're, you're, you've got a, You've got another you, problem, you know. You've got so, something else going on over there. Yeah, you, really. It's, it's, you it's, know, it's, it's invigorating living up there. Yeah. You know, and, and Auntie Casey, that is such a good point. I never thought about that, right? there. You have a lot of sort of folks there seem to live long lives. That's a mm -hmm. really good point. I never quite realized that. Yeah, so if you have a bunch of folks that are, you know, Nate, kind of been there. Nate, Native Hawaiians lived here for, uh, you know, a thousand something years. They're some of the healthiest people on the planet until uh, – we Westerners uh, came in and ruined it all, you know, un, un, until until they they started adopting our diet. You know, as soon as they yeah, adopted our yeah. Western diet, that was that was the end of that. You know, and, you know, not to mention drinking and smoking. But uh, uh, anyway, hey, uh, um, so thank you so much. I really appreciate your folks, uh, Manao and uh, Raul does too. Raul, mahalo for all the first hand info. Yeah, Raul, you got it, buddy. Uh, Dylan, any uh, any closing thoughts here you want to share with us before we we bring the show to a close? Yeah, overall, like I always talk about, it's always about context. And yes, the volcano is very dramatic in the news and the way it's portrayed in the media. But the reality is, I mean, wherever you live in the country, you face all kinds of different types of natural uh, challenges and disasters. You have wildfires in California, you have blizzards, you know, throughout the, the north northeast. Um, you can have tornadoes, you know, all in the middle of the country. There's all kinds of other things. There's flooding in certain areas, you know, in the coastal south. So 
just like anywhere else, we, we have our issues here, but I would argue I would rather be close to an active volcano that is relatively pretty safe and doesn't threaten us on a day-to-day -day basis than the possibility of a tornado touching down and ripping through my town anytime or a hurricane coming and flooding my whole entire town. I mean, there's lots of other, uh, pretty much anywhere you live, you're going to face those issues. So I wouldn't use the, vol I wouldn't overplay the volcano as a deterrent or something that you should overly worry about because we don't, you we, it doesn't concern us at all when, we, when you live here. I mean, if you if you talk to the folks that, that live there, that's that's pretty much what the whole scoop is. You should know the facts. You should be informed. You want to, this is where you want to get in touch with people like like Dylan, who's lived there all his life, um, and uh, Uncle Buddy and Auntie Casey, who have had a lifetime there. But definitely, that's kind of where I think that you know Auntie Casey, that was such a that was such a, a great moment of wisdom there. That look, you look around, you see a bunch of people that have lived there for long lives. That that should tell you really everything that you need to know about the health. Yeah, and uh, Joey really appreciates it. Mahalo, Peter, Dylan. Uh, Uncle Buddy, Auntie Casey, really appreciate the live stream. Yeah, thanks, Greg. It was it was really great. I'm glad you're all there. Um, final pitch. Let's see here. But I got another final slide over here that I want to kind of close on. Um, oh, here we go. Yeah. So I've got my my little. I put my little Santa. Uh, this is uh, my. It, it is uh, the the 22nd. Uh, Christmas is right around the corner. So I put together a little Mele Kalikimaka slide. Mele Kalikimaka is the Hawaiian word for Merry Christmas. And you see there, this is um, Honolulu City Lights. This is the uh, the Shaka Santa and Mrs. Santa Claus. You notice there, if you look closely, that Santa's got shorts on and he's barefoot, uh, which is like the classic <laughs> Hawaiian Santa. And he's given the Shaka. He's got an open shirt there uh, and Mrs. Claus. And they got their they got their toes in a pool. So uh, that's, nice. that's what that. Yeah, that's a great one about that. So, uh, yeah, and 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 Joyce agrees. Uh, Joyce uh, Joyce says, "Yep, it's just part of life in paradise." Exactly. Yeah. So, look, folks, I want to thank you all. We're gonna our show is gonna continue on January eighth. Uh, you know, uh, Uncle Buddy, Auntie Casey, can't thank you enough for taking the time out of your day to spend with us and give us this beautiful view of your house. It was a beautiful day today in, in Volcano. Thank you so much for being here. I so appreciate it. I know everybody else does too. Uh, just been great having you folks. And I'm just so happy to have met you folks. And you you folks are naturals. I, we, you know, gang, look, we should do like a sponsor or something to get these two on the show. I, I think they're like naturals. Dylan, I, Dylan, I don't know, man, you've got competition, dude. Uh, <laughs> It's, we got, it's, in the, it's in the genes, man. It's in the I'll blood. tell you, man. I'll tell you. I I love them. They're they're man, great. I don't so. know. I'd have to take off uh, time off from puttering, you know, to, uh, <laughs> to do this, you know. They, I want to get away from your busy puttering day, there, Uncle. That's right. Uh, <laughs> all right, folks. I want to bid you all on aloha, and I'll go around the quick table. Y'all could could give your last chance to say, uh, buddy, uh, Uncle Buddy, and Auntie Casey, give you a chance to say goodbye to everybody. Aloha. Aloha. And Peter, so nice to, to really get to know you. Yeah, this has been a real pleasure and lots of fun. Thanks. It's a real, it's a real treat. Yeah, you're very welcome. Dylan? Yeah, hello, everybody. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Look forward to seeing you guys next year. Merry yep. Christmas and uh, Merry Christmas. And we will we will see you all next year on January. Aloha, everyone. Aloha. Aloha.